You're listening to Good Morning Gwinnett, a division of Noise Media Network, hosted by Audrey Bell Kearney, sharing stories about people and places around beautiful Gwinnett County and beyond. Monday through Thursday at 10 a.m. Southern Living at its best. Good morning, good morning, good morning, all my Gwinnettians out there and all of my friends around the world. Hope you're having a beautiful day. It's, today is Taco Tuesday. That's if you like tacos. Not everybody like tacos. But for those of you who like Taco Tuesday, it's Taco Tuesday. Hope you're having a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day here in Gwinnett County. 72 degrees going up to a beautiful high of 86. It's going to be hot. It's going to be one of them hot days. It's going to be a hot day, y'all. But that's all right. We ain't going to complain. We ain't going to complain. We're going to enjoy this hot day. All right, today is uh, Tuesday, June the 7th. It's also my wedding anniversary. So I want to wish a happy, happy anniversary to my husband. We've been married for 19 years. We've been together for 22 years. And I think next year, God willing, he let us see another day. We're going to do something big. I think I'm going to, I've been talking about going to Italy forever. And I think that next year, that's going to be my goal for June uh, 7th. So I probably won't be able to talk to you guys unless I can talk to you live from Italy, which is possible. Because the internet does go all over the world, hence all my friends around the world listening. But my husband and I met in 1999. Um, no, no, no. We met in 2000. We met in 2000. We were in a wedding. And I know this sounds very cliche, but this is a, this is exactly how we met. We were in a wedding. My friend was marrying his friend. And so my friend, I met her when my daughter was about five years old and she had a daycare and I was working. I was a single mother and I was working and my, I was taking my daughter to this daycare center. But after school, I need, after, after daycare closed, I needed somebody to watch her. So my, my friend, she became my friend because I found out that she lived right around the corner. Literally, she could walk around to the daycare where my daughter was going. And so my daughter went to first grade. She, I needed somebody to pick her up by the because I had to get off of work. And so she would go and pick up her kid, her daughter, and my daughter became best friends because they were in the same grade. So she would pick up her daughter and my daughter and everybody else's kids. And everybody loved her because she just was a big kid herself and everybody loved her. And so, but she wasn't married at the time. She wasn't married. She was just dating him. And um, they decided to get married. And I met them. I met her in, let me see, I met her when, she, when my daughter was in the first grade. So I had already known her probably four or five years before they decided to get married and they had been dating a long time so they decided to get married I was in the wedding and so was my husband and my husband said I walked past him at the wedding wedding rehearsal and I said to him you smell good and I and I know I probably did because anybody that knows me know that I love perfume and I don't care who's wearing the man or woman if it smells nice I'm gonna tell him you smell nice I was at the I was at the um, I was sitting in the parking lot at the grocery store last I was last, let's see, last Thursday, I think, last Thursday or Friday, I took my uncle to the grocery store, and I had the window cracked, and there was a girl who was, who was getting out of the car next to me, when she opened up her car door, whatever she had on smelled amazing, and so I rolled my window down, all the way down, I was like, I don't know what you have on, but you smell great, and she started laughing, she said, thank you, so she had on something by Ariana, Ariel Grande, Ariana Grande. I forgot what she told me it was called. It was something about Ariana Grande, but it smelled so nice. I had to tell her she smelled nice. But anyway, he said that I said to him, um, you smell nice. And I said to him, well, what were you wearing? He said he was wearing Eternity by Calvin Klein. And so, you know, and I guess that's how we started to talk. And then I was at that point, I was launching my first real business, which was a doll company. And we had a couple of investment meetings where he was supposed to be investing in a company. And then I think on the third meeting, he brought me some roses. Little did he know that roses was my, that they were my favorite flower. So he brought me roses and I was like, oh my God, this guy's trying to date me. And I told him, I told him right out the gate. I was like, look, you don't want to date me because I don't have any money. I'm trying to run this. I'm trying to start this business with no money. I have bad credit. I got this baby that I'm trying to raise. I said, I don't like to cook. I hate doing the laundry. And I told him all, and I don't like grocery shopping. I told him all this stuff that I did not like. It's like, you don't want to date me, you know, because I'm just, I'm not wife material. Because I, I, in my mind, I really wasn't because I didn't like doing any of that stuff. And so, um, I wasn't really, you know, I was like, I don't know if I'm going I'm, I'm to be a good, I, you know, I'm not that person. So, I, cause I was, I hadn't dated anybody for like three years. Cause the last person I dated, I broke up with them and I was like, yeah, I'm not doing this. I'm going to focus on myself. I'm going to focus on my mindset. I'm going to focus on my business. And that's where I was going. And he said he was okay with the whole thing. 
He was like, he okay with it. You know, he know how to cook. He does. He don't mind grocery shopping. He don't. You know, um, what else do he do? He grocery shops the things that I really don't like doing. Like, and I told him that, like, I don't like doing. Now, here's the funny thing is, I cook more now than I ever have in my life. And I have no problems doing it. So maybe at some point I became a wife, like a real wife. Um, I do laundry. Um, which I, and I, I used to hate to do laundry, but I will do it. And it's, it's crazy because the, the laundry room is literally outside the door, outside the bedroom door. But it was just one of them things in your mind. And I think I think I am I'm, I was the way I was because of my mom and my dad, right? Because my mother was like the best wife. Like, and I try to, I be talking to this, talking to my brother about this because he always say, oh, you modern women. But I think when you grow up, and you don't, you see your mother being like this amazing person. And then you see your dad being like this awful womanizing person. And you see her cooking and cleaning and taking care of the kids. And then you see him doing everything but the right thing. You grew up with that mindset like, I ain't doing that. I'm not doing that. So I think that that's what happened to me. I was like, yeah, I'm not doing any of that. I'm not cooking. I'm not cleaning. I'm not doing any of that stuff. But, but I set out to say despite me and all my issues because I those are issues and in, in, in reality those that's baggage baggage from my childhood that I drug into my into my adulthood and he came along and said I'm okay with your baggage now don't get me wrong he got his own baggage but he didn't tell me what his was I had to find out I told him out the gate so he would know like look you don't want me I ain't the one for you because you're a nice guy and he's like no nah, I'm good with it and he was good with it he has been good with it for the last 22 years and you know, I count myself blessed because um, I've been an entrepreneur for all of those years, every one of them, and that alone comes with a lot of ups and downs. But he said he was he was he was along for the ride. He was here to the end, and he has been. And no, no, it has not been all flowers and roses. No, it has not. But we worked through a lot of things, and so I can honestly tell you, probably the last out of the twenty two years, the first three years was you know we were still in the honeymoon stage. Then we hit year number seven, everything started to like shake up a little bit. And then the last 10 years has been like, have been pretty good. So, you know, I count myself blessed, you know, because I know that there are people who have not made it this far. And let me tell y'all something. There is no such thing as a perfect relationship. And you know why? Because there are no perfect people. Let me say that again. That should have been my closing statement. There's no such thing as a perfect relationship because there are no perfect people. And I think if people just understood that they would la- that their marriages will last longer. And here's the thing, everybody's not meant to be married. They're just not. And if you know you're not meant to be married, then don't get married cuz I honestly didn't after I turned 30, I was like, yeah, I'm probably never going to get married. That was my thought because I had not met anyone who who is willing to accept me for who I am because I'm always willing to accept people for who they are. Meet you where you are. And once I know who you are, I'm going to believe who you say you are and I'm going to treat you accordingly because that's what you have to do. There are people in my life, there are people in my life right now. And once I've understood who they were, I'm okay with who you are. As long as you're okay with who you are, fine by me. I, I know how to act with you. I know how to treat you. I know how to interact with you. I, I get it all. I understand. So, and I think that's important. So if you're in a relationship right now and I'm no, listen, here's my thing. I am by no means anybody to speak on relationships, yours. I can speak on mine and I can tell you, um, I'm going to tell y'all this quick story and I'm going to get on with the show. My husband said to me one time, we was having, um, a discussion and it was, it was, it was kind of like, it wasn't an argument cause he's not an argument. He's not an argumentative person. He just does not like to argue. Like if I started flying off the handle, like a crazy person, he shuts down and let me flop the handle and then I'll come back around later. I don't do that very often, but now and again I do because he might say something that ticked me off. I'm just being honest with y'all. He know. He probably laughing right now. He's probably saying she crazy. Because he says it all the time. He he says I'm crazy. Everybody else says I'm mean. He says I'm crazy. Um and I'm none of those things. I'm me, you know. And so we um we were having just a, a discussion and I'm going to say this from my previous relationship, my husband and my ex are pretty much the same people. One is just more thugged out than the other, right? And I told my husband that when I first met him, I said, boy, you just like, you just like my ex, like in a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of ways, like just willing to accept me for who I am. Um, but we, we were so young that we probably, we were too young to make it because we didn't know anything. 
by the time I met my husband, I had I was a grown grown woman. I was I was thirty two, I think. So I was a grown grown woman. I had the kid, and so I remember my ex saying the exact same. Well, my ex said to me, we had a conversation one time, and he said to me, Audrey, everything in my in our relationship wasn't wasn't my fault. Now he had never ever ever said that to me ever, right? But I guess when he grew up, he had time to look back and see that it wasn't. But he never said that to me in a relationship. So he was trying to come back like, yeah, it's too late for you to come back, bruh. Can't come back now. But my husband said something very similar. We was having a, a discussion. And he said to me very early on, he didn't wait 18 years to say this. He, he said it very early on. He was like, look, he said, the things that I'm weak in, you're strong. And the things that you're weak in, I'm strong. We balance each other out. And I'm paraphrasing, but that was the gist of the conversation. When he said that, it was like an epiphany that I had. And he was right. So while I was expecting him to be somebody he was in a space he wasn't comfortable in, he had to let me know, I'm not going to be comfortable in that space because that's not my space. You're comfortable in that space. That's your space. And I was like, you're right. When he said that to me, our relationship went went a lot smoother because he was right. I am strong where I am strong. He is strong where he is strong. And in the, in, in, in the relationship, it balances us out, right? Yeah, I'm sure there's things he wish I would do differently, but there are things that I wish he would do differently. But it, it, he is who he is. I am who I am. And we've decided to go ahead and move forward the way we are because nobody is perfect. Therefore, you would never have a perfect relationship. But you can have a good relationship. And we have a good relationship. My mom loved my husband. She was the first wife. I was the second wife. But I knew she loved him because of how he loved me. Right? And he loved her just as much. Probably more. I think he loved her more. So, happy anniversary, darling. Thank you for 19, 22 years of just having my back. And hopefully I've had yours. And I hope we got 22 more left. So, I had to just put that out there, y'all, because I wanted somebody to understand that. And I'm getting a little choked up, and I don't get very, I don't get choked up very often. But I wanted somebody to understand that people are not perfect, and if you're looking for this perfect person, you're not gonna find them. And what you're gonna find yourself, you're gonna be by yourself, right? Because you're looking for perfect. I'm not saying that you have to lower your standards, but I'm telling you, stop being unrealistic about people. Because if you're looking for somebody to check every box, they're not going to check every single box. I'm sure I didn't check all his boxes. I checked some of them, but I'm, I am guarantee you, there was probably five of them I didn't check, right? And there was a couple he didn't check because my husband is very quiet. If you have not figured it out by now, I like to talk. Uh, if you haven't figured that out over the last 900 episodes of this show, I like to talk. And this is just one show. I do five. So he's not that person. And I had to make peace with, well... You know, he's not going to talk to me that much because I like to talk a lot. And that's okay. Because you know what I can do? I got friends that I can get on the phone to talk with, and they talk just as much as me. So somebody need to hear that today. Happy anniversary, happy anniversary Franklin. Love you for life, baby. Uh, see you later so we can go out and get me some crabs. All right? All right, let's get on with this show. I know that was a long time for me to get there, but I had to say that. Today is Tuesday, June the 7th. My anniversary is also World Caring Day. It's also National Chocolate Ice Cream Day. Guess what, y'all? I don't like chocolate ice cream. Isn't that crazy? I like chocolate. I don't like chocolate ice cream. I don't like strawberry ice cream. I just like vanilla and butter pecan. That's all I like. I like cookies and cream, too, though. It's National Boon Day. have no idea what National Boon Day is, but for whoever Boon is, it's his day. National Oklahoma Day and National VCR Day. Do they even make VCRs anymore? Like, for real. What do you, what do, you do with a VCR? But anyway, it's national. It's probably a collectible at this point. It's probably a collectible at this point right here. Yeah, a VCR. You probably show a kid a VCR. They probably like, what is that? Because you don't need a VCR for real anymore. Everything is streaming online. All right. All right. Let's get on to these horoscopes brought to you by Noted Astrologer Michael Thyssen for today, June the seventh. We're gonna kick it off like we always do, and that is with Aries. You must be careful not to trust anyone. If they are really interested, they'll wait. Don't expect others to live up to your promises and you won't be disappointed or find yourself stuck with delays. I just said that. 
Don't expect anybody to live up to your promises. Yeah, yeah. And anyway, if they are really interested in you, Aries, they will wait. I'm just saying, if they're trying to put a rush on you, don't let them. Take your time. Do it right. You can do it, baby. Yeah, yeah. That's a song, y'all. I'm quoting a song right now. Take your time. Do it right. You can do it, baby. That's a song. It's an old song. Back in my day, I'm having a moment right here. Yes, I am. Back in the day. Taurus, keep important information to yourself. Outdoor sports should entice you. You might have a problem juggling your time. Listen, Taurus, you don't want your business in the street, don't tell nobody. That's that. Listen, don't tell a soul. If you don't want your business in the street, don't tell nobody. That's all you got. Shut your mouth. Keep your important information to yourself. Gemini, emotionally, things may not run as smoothly. Try not to say the wrong thing at the wrong time. New romantic partners will evolve through group endeavors. However, the association may not may not be likely to last. Yeah, that's going to be a part-time, a short-term romance. Yep, it's, it's just one of them things. It's going to be a fling. Here's the thing, though, Gemini. Don't fling if you if you in that thing. If you got one of them situations going, you don't need to be flinging. I'm just trying to help you out. Maybe you can get 22 years out of it. But if you out there flinging, I don't know now. You're going to have to fight. You're going to have to fight after that fling. I'm trying to help somebody out today. Cancer, don't expect support from your mate. A female colleague may cause problems for you. Your high energy will enable you to enlist the help of those in a position you back. All right, listen here. I don't know if this is a man or a woman, but she is troubled today, whoever she is. So keep her out of your circle today because they could, she could cause problems for you. At work, if you see her coming, go the other direction. I'm just trying to help you out, Cancer, because she's a troublemaker. Yes, and whatever you're doing today, don't expect support from your mate because you're not going to get it. So if you don't expect it, then you can't be disappointed. That's all. Leo, do your job and then spend some time with family. You'll be glad you did. You're not your usual self today. Drastic financial losses may be likely if you lend money. What does that mean, Leo? That means do not lend money because if you lend that money, chances are you're not going to get it back. And that's what I always say. Don't lend money that you cannot afford to lose. And if you lend it, them losses may be drastic. So I'm telling you, don't do it for the sake of your financial future. I'm just trying to help you out today, Leo. Virgo, control those desires to cast your fate to the wind. You may find yourself caught in the middle of an argument that has nothing to do with you. Your desire for excitement and adventure may be expensive. All right, listen. Listen. Don't be in folks' business and then you won't, cause, you won't catch yourself in the middle. The reason you're in the middle is because you're in people's business and it has nothing to do with you. If they even try to drag you in it, so uh-uh, 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 y'all gonna keep me out of this. Don't get in it. That's all you gotta do. Just say no, Virgo. You ain't got to get in them folks' business. And then you get in there, everybody mad at you when you didn't have to be. Tell them, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. I'm walking away because I ain't about to get into this mess y'all got going on. Just tell them and walk away. Just don't stand around and look, look and listen so you can go back and share what you, nah, uh-uh, uh-uh, don't do it. All right, listen, I'm going to a song. I'll be right back after this song to bring you more of the horoscopes brought to you by Noda the Astrologer, Micah Thoughts, and stay tuned. I last heard your voice I know that you felt like you didn't have the choice And I don't blame you No, I don't blame you
It's your girl, Audrey Bell Kearney, giving you the daily rundown, the daily horoscopes brought to you by Noted Astrologer Michael Thyssen. I was over here having a moment, right? I was thinking about something. I'm going to do the horoscopes, I promise y'all. So I was thinking about, I said, how many times has my have my husband and I have, have had an argument this year so far? And I think it's been three, and it wasn't really an argument. It was something that I've done. Because here, here's what happens, right? I'm really not an argumentative person, right? But I may, my husband may be having a bad day. He doesn't talk about stuff. So I may have said something, something, or done something to push a button that catches me off guard. And then when I push his button unintentionally, because I didn't do it intentionally, I push his button unintentionally. And then he kind of snap at me. And when he does that, now I got to snap back. But when he does it, it infuriates me so, so bad. And because I'm like, where did that come from? But, you know, I've, I'm learning that he holds stuff in until things just make him, like, and it's not a bad thing. He just may say something that comes out of the blue to me that he's holding in. And I, and I give y'all a prime example. And I hope he's listening because this was funny. It's, it's funny now I can laugh about it. At the moment, I was hot to death. So we went to dinner one night, and I drove. And um, he didn't know what he did with his phone. So when we came in the house, he didn't know what he did with his phone. And so we're in the house. He's like, I don't know what I did with my phone. And this was after he had got in the bed and everything. He was ready to go to bed, and so was I. And so he was in the bed. I was on my way to get in the bed. And he realized he didn't have the phone. And he was like, I don't know what I did with my phone. So he was looking all over. He couldn't find the phone. And I said, well, you want me to go downstairs and check and see if it's downstairs? He's like, yes. Yeah. So I went downstairs. Now, this may be nice. night. I'm going downstairs to check for the phone. So I get downstairs. I come back upstairs. I said, yeah, I don't see the phone. And so he said, he said, um, he said, he said, uh, maybe I left it in the car. I said, oh, I thought, cause he had to unlock the door with the phone. So I was driving, which meant when I'm driving most of the time, he, we use the phone. We got a smart, a smart lock. He used the phone to unlock the door. So he had to unlock. I said, well, I know you had it cause you unlocked the door. So what happened was I do not like to park by the grass. So in the driveway, I like to park so I can step out on the pavement. So I parked kind of close to his car, I guess it was, or my car. And so when he went to get out the car, the car door wouldn't open. To It opened wide enough for him to get out, but he couldn't open it real wide. So he instead of him putting the phone in his pocket, he laid the phone in the dashboard, and he got out the car and closed the door. And I locked the door, and we went on in the house. So he left the phone in the car. 
And so I was asking him, but did you, I said, well, how did you leave the phone in the car? So I asked him something about leaving the phone in the car and he snapped at me and oh my God, cause I'm just trying to be helpful. Oh my God, you snapped at me and I'm trying to be helpful. He snapped at me. And I guess it, it was his frustration of him leaving the car, the phone in the car, me, me parking too close to his car because I hate stepping out on the grass. I need to step out on the pavement because I don't, I'm scared I'm going to step on a snake. And so he snapped at me and I snapped back. Well, here's the problem. I was trying to help. So when he snapped, I snapped back, but I kind of lost it. So I flipped out. I didn't just snap. I flipped out. So I was laughing because that's what makes me, those are the type of things that get to me. And, 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 but we always, we always recover, but at that moment it's not pretty. So I don't know. I just started thinking about that and laughing because I was like, well, how many times have we had a, a, a altercation this year? So it's only been about, I want to say three, it might not even been three. That was recent. That's why I can remember that one, but we don't. Cause I'm not, I'm not really, I'll be trying to protect my energy. So I try not to get all upset about stuff. And he's just not that person to just argue. So when he gets, when he snaps about something, it need, in my mind, like, I'm trying to help and you snapping at me because now I'm flipping out. So when I do that, he shuts down. But he, he pushed that button. So I done pushed his button. Then he pushes my button. Now both button, buttons are pushed. And then we, we bring it back around the next day. Because he's always he's good like that. Like, he's good with just, because I won't talk. He'll talk, he'll text, he'll do all these things to make me forget about it. And then I was like, okay, whatever. So anyway, I don't know. I don't know what made me think about that, but I was laughing as I was thinking about it. Libra, your level will be extremely sensitive and now will not be a good time to make changes that they won't like. You can make changes to your home that will be pleasing to all concerned. Pleasure trips will be favorable and bring about romance. All right, look at you. Go on some, listen, pleasure trips. You're going to have a good time. And it's going to be romantic. Libra, yeah, take that time. Do it right. You can do it. Oh, that's another song. Scorpio, you must take care not to overexert yourself if involved in sports. You should be promoting your ideas. Your lover probably won't put up with your behavior. All right, so if you act in a fool today, Scorpio, just know that they're saying no, not, they're not putting up with you today. So you might want to get that under control. Yes, in the meantime, work on your ideas. Do something constructive with your time. Do something constructive with yourself. Don't be out there p- pissing your, your, your lover off because they're not putting up with you today. They, they're tired of you and your mess. I'm just <laughs> I'm just adding all that to you, to you Scorpio. That's probably the truth, though. <laughs> Sagittarius, your fickle nature, fickle, your fickle nature may cause jealousy. Don't bother complaining. Do your work yourself. Female colleagues may help you get the job you get the job done. Listen, don't bother complaining. It's not gonna help you today, Sagittarius. Just do the work yourself. Go ahead, get the work done. Do it yourself. All that complaining and whining, it's not gonna help you. So stop. Just don't do it. Capricorn, you will easily charm members of the opposite sex. Okay, look at you with your charm except today, Capricorn. You must try to include your mate in your activities a day. Now here's the thing. You you charming the opposite sex, but you gotta listen. Remember, you gotta mate and include them include them, Cap, and whatever it is you're doing. I know you're charming to everybody else today, but for, don't forget you gotta mate. A little look, look, look a little volleyball, or other outdoor sports should be on your agenda. Okay, volleyball, go ahead on with yourself. I, it was this girl in in in, uh, in Florida. She was a volleyball uh, player. She was tall to y'all. She was beautiful, but she was tall. She was at least six one. You know, I'm a midget, so I'm like five three. So me standing next to her, like, hey, I didn't, I didn't actually stand next to her, but I saw her, and my friends were telling me she was a, a professional volleyball player. She was. I never seen. I had never met a professional volleyball player. I still didn't, but I did see her. Aquarius, opportunities for romance are present. Try not to argue about trivial matters. Disputes may start because of lack of honesty. Somebody's lying, Aquarius. Now it's going to cause a problem. Here's the thing. Don't be lying. Listen, and if they're lying to you, tell them to stop because it's causing problems. Where there, where there does not have to be problems. Lies, lies breed problems. You know what I'm saying? And in, in the meantime, don't don't argue about small stuff. Don't smit, sweat the small stuff because it's all small stuff. I get it. When you pissed off at the moment, that means nothing to you, right? <laughs> I know. Like, Audrey, I hear what you're saying, but I got to say this. I understand. I understand. I get it. Last but not least, my fellow fish Pisces, get the whole family involved in a worthwhile cause or cultural event. 
You may be overly emotional when dealing with your mate. Secret affairs will only lead to heartache. Now, I don't know about you, Fish. I ain't in no secrets right now. You shouldn't be either. Somebody's heart is going to get broken. Because here's the thing. If it's a secret, you shouldn't be doing it. And so you got this secret affair. Somebody's heart is going to be broken. It could be yours. It could be yours, Fish. And if you set yourself up for that kind of heartbreak, it's your fault. I get it. They were gorgeous. They were charming. They were, they listened to you. They understood you. I get all of that. But it was a situation when you got in it, baby. Either you were in a situation or they were in one. And I understand you needed somebody to talk to because nobody talks as much as you do. They don't listen to you. They take you for granted. I understand all of that. Here's the thing, though. You're in a situation. They're in a situation. So you need to go and fix your own situation, or they need to go and fix their own situation. That way, nobody's heart is broken. Okay? Okay. Just thought I'd share that with you. That's all I'm saying. So all the horoscopes I got for you today, I'll be back again tomorrow at 10 a.m. God willing to bring you more of the horoscopes brought to you by Noted Astrology, Micah Thyssen. Now let's get on to some news you can use. All right, there's a recall on crab meat. Yes, Lord. When I saw this come out, I was like, Lord have mercy. I just made a whole salad. We made pos- we made a crab salad Sunday with crab meat. And I'm like, oh my God. I don't even know what brand I don't even know what brand my husband used. But anyway, um, after a recent recall on, on certain Irvington seafood packages, Georgia shoppers have been urged to double check their purchases. According to the US Food and Drug Administration, I'm about to go throw that whole bowl of crab salad in the garbage. Cause I don't know which brand it was, but it's in our it's in our we made some. So I'm like, Ugh. anyway, the Alabama-based company has recalled its one-pound package of crab meat, with, which include jumbo, lump, finger, and claw crab meat, because they have been they have been the potential contaminated um, with listeria. I don't know what that is, but it says that. It says according to the news release, no illnesses have been reported to the FDA yet. Thank God. Anyway, listeria is an organism that can be that can cause serious and sometimes fatal infections in young children, frail and old elderly people, and others with weakened immune system. Guess what your girl gonna do? Go down there and throw that crab salad in the garbage. Cause I don't know. I ate some. I feel fine. But here's the thing: I ain't trying to take no chances. Um, although healthy individuals healthy individuals may suffer only short term symptoms such as high fever, severe headaches, stiffness nauseous abdominal pain and diarrhea the infection can cause miscarriages and stillbirths among pregnant women so again again y'all the 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 the, food is it's the irvington seafood packages the one pound package of crab meat um it includes jumbo lump finger and claw meat so we just used some crab meat i don't know what brand it was but guess what's not gonna happen we're not eating anymore so make sure you check your packages and see if you have it. Irvington, listen to me. Irvington seafood packages, right? It may be contaminated with something called listeria. It's a one pound package of crab meat, which includes jump, jumbo, lump, finger, and claw crab meat. Claw meat, okay? Check your food. Check the package. Get rid of it. I get it. I love crab. I'm going to have some today, but it's, it's not that. It's not that. It's not from Irvington. So check your food packages, okay? I want to make sure you guys stay safe out there. All right? I love crab more than anybody I know, but I ain't trying to eat none that's contaminated with listeria. Ain't trying to do it. Just ain't trying to do it. If you're looking for a job, TSA at the airport is hiring officers and they're offering them a $1,000 signing bonus. So make sure to go over to the uh, Atlanta airport to find out more. They, they need Listen, they need TSA officers. Somebody has to make sure that people are not coming through there with guns and they want to give you a signing bonus if you get on board with them. So go ahead, get that job, make that money, um, and get the job, make the money, and keep us safe at the airport. That's all I'm saying. Okay, I'm going to go to the song. I'll be right back after the song to give you more of the rundown of what's going on in and around Gwinnett County and beyond. What can I do? You're so loving and gentle to the core. What can I do when you feel me? With happiness and much more What can I do? You're so stunning I 
just can't look away What can I do? I should know by now you make my day Never more Will dreams expire Keep it burning, keep it burning Baby, God, this fire on my head And don't dare to let go Cause each day, cause each day for you Before I get to this story, I gotta tell you, I'm working on an NFT. I'm creating, I'm creating an NFT for a client, and I'm so excited about this because this is the first NFT I'll be creating for a client. And what I've learned about NFTs, and it's you know what, it's Talk Business Tuesday. I talk about this on the other side. So let me other side. Let me get to the news, and we're gonna talk about what, why my NFT failed, and what I'm doing for my client that's gonna be different. And I'm excited about that. So it's a lot going on, but I'll talk about that on the other side. Today is Talk talk Business, Talk Tech Tuesday. And so I'm going to give you some news and then we're going to talk about that on the other side. Um, anyway, so listen. So the Republicans Women Group promoting, um, they're promoting, so right now, um, the Gwinnett School Board runoff. The, the, first of all, this is the first time ever that Gwinnett has had a non-partisan, nonpartisan race for school board. Before you had, you knew who your candidate were, you knew what party they were, they were with. But because of the the legislation legislation that was passed earlier this year, you don't know who's who. But here's to me, this is a telling sign of who's who. You may not, it may not be on the ballot there what 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 party they are in. But when you hear stuff like this, you kind of know what party they're in. So, um, a get out to get out the vote prayer rally is for um, nonpartisan Gwinnett School Board District Four candidate Alexis Williams will take place. And Snellville on Saturday. So this is her. This 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 event is um, been, I guess, sponsored or supported by the conservative Republican women of North Atlanta. So she's African American. Alexis is African American, and she's getting the support of the Republican women 
uh, Republican Women of North Atlanta. Now, we don't know which party she's in because it's nonpartisan, right? But because of the group that's supporting her or supporting her her movement or whatever you call it, kind of gives you a hint. On the flip side, but the crazy part is, right, the, the Facebook flyer says Alveda King, the niece of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., will lead the prayer at the event. So this is kind of like, well, okay, is this a Republican event for her, but it, for Alexis? Now you got Dr. Martin Luther King niece a part of it. So it kind of, I don't know. Anyway, anyway, politics, I'm learning that politics is something serious. You hear me? When I say serious, I mean it's it's just really tricky. Like I've heard people who say, you know, I thought people were going to vote for me. You know, I thought I, I had done enough to prove myself and they didn't get the votes. You know, I've worked on some campaigns. I worked on one in this, uh, this uh, primary election cycle where I was trying to, you know, I thought the person was going to win and they didn't even come close. So it's like, what in the world? And I'm sure that was a shocker to them as well because they had been doing the work for the last couple of years. Anyway, um, uh, William's opponent, who is Adrian Simmons, she's getting the support from, you know, a bunch of other folks over here on the Democratic side. So Simmons has been backed by the Democrats, such as School Board District Everton Blair, U.S. Representative Hank Johnson, State, uh, State Senator Rep. Uh, Nikki Merritt, Sheikh Rahman, Gloria Bolton, and Kim Jackson. So they have an event this coming, I mean, yeah, is it this Saturday? The 13th. The 13th, they're having an event, and it's going to be at the Awkward Cup over in Snellville to support Simmons, while, you know, um, Williams is being supported by the the uh, uh, Republican women's group. So, kind of, kind of shows you, I mean, if I was looking at this, which I am, I'm saying, okay, well, for me, it's like, who's supporting you? Kind of tells me where you are in the race and what side you're on. I could be totally wrong about that. But it's the support that you're getting. They're saying, okay, well, I know where you are. Whether you're a Democrat, whether you're a Republican, it's the people that's supporting you. On the ballot, we don't know. But I'm looking at the support here. And so it kind of says, okay, I see where you are. I see who your allegiance is going to be to. I see who you're going to side with. And I could be totally wrong about that. I don't think I am. But I could be. Anyway, early voting for June 21st runoff election will take place um, at 7 a.m. to 7 p.m daily and from um, Saturday until June 17th according to the Gwinnett Bounty Elections Department so that this is a runoff race the runoff is going to be June 21st and we got to see may the best woman win that's all I'm saying may the best woman win yes you know with all of the shootings that's been happening the mass shootings that have that, that have been happening it, it's just oh my god it just it blows my mind I think about when I was a little girl not even a little girl when I was a teenager this kind of stuff we never heard about I don't think we heard of any mass killings until um until the bombing in Oklahoma I think that's the first time I had ever heard of a mass killing when they did the bombing in Oklahoma now it seems like every other day you're hearing about a mass shooting which I think is just it's just heartbreaking it's just heartbreaking anyway um Gwinnett County student Taylor Lee um, he said, you know what, we got to stop. We got to stop the mass shooting. We got to get a grip on this gun thing because it's out of control. And that's a lot of people are saying that. Here's what. Here's the part I don't understand about this, right? If people are just dying in masses, why is it so hard for the people who have the gun rights to say, okay, listen, we understand what you're saying. We're going to make it tougher. But first of all, I don't think regular people should have assault weapons at all. Why do you need them? Why do you need an assault weapon? You know what I'm saying? I just don't think we should sell them to the general public at all. That's my opinion. I don't think so. I'm not saying not have a gun. I got a gun. But I don't have an assault weapon, right? We have guns, but we don't have assault weapons. They're locked away so people can just walk in and get them. That's the part I'm I'm not understanding. If you know that somebody can go to a gun store at 18 years old, buy a gun without any question, and then go back and shoot up a school why would you not want to prevent another tragedy like that? That's what I'm not understanding. Like, why are people so ingrained in what they believe that they forget about everybody else? Right? It doesn't matter until it happens to your family. What about the family that lost loved ones because of these people just can get these guns and just shoot who they want to shoot? Speaking of who they want to shoot, 
um, what's the kid name that killed the people up? He went, he got his gun. He was walking down the street. And he decided, you know, I'm gonna go out here. I'm gonna just gonna. He he killed the people, and he got off. He got he was he was he was found now guilty. Well, now he's suing the media because it said the media. You know, the media has caused him not to be able to get a job. Um, he can't go anywhere without a bodyguard. That's the media's fault because he killed the folks, and it made the news. And because it made the news, it's their fault that he can't have a real life. How about the people who don't have a life at all because they're not breathing? I'm just saying. It's just the stupidity. And then me personally, I don't think I can get behind someone who does something like that for no good reason. And I get it. Money's involved. But you know what? Let me just say this. I'm going to get off this subject because this is a, this is, anyway, Tyler is saying that he feel like people should have to get a license. They should have to go through training for a gun just like you go through training for everything else. You go to training, get a driver's license. You go train to get all kind of licenses, but you can just walk into a gun store and buy an assault weapon and go shoot up some folks. I agree with him. You should not be able to do that. I personally don't believe that anybody should be able to go to the store and buy an assault weapon. I get it. The gun folks probably mad at me right now, but I don't give up. And this is a family show, but I could tell you what I was thinking if it wasn't a family show. But I'm just saying, I just don't think so. So I'm, I'm going to change that subject because that's a touchy subject for me. Um, just the stupidity and then the greed behind the folks. Who go like this? This lawyer, who's who's, uh, how, you, so you pushing out a lawsuit because the media reported the news? Seriously, how about there was no news to report? Like people losing their lives. Just think about that for one good second. Think about that. Okay, that's the second is up. So you want to back a lawsuit to to sue the media because someone killed somebody and now they don't have a life? How about the? How about the people that are dead? Think they got a life? How about their families is left behind to mourn them? And every time you get into the news and say something, do something stupid, like file a lawsuit, they're not reminded that their loved ones are not there. How about that? You want to sue the media? Oh, my effing God. I'm just over here shaking my head right now. I just, trust me, if this wasn't a family show, I'll give them a piece of my mind. But it is, and I won't. Because I could. But I will not. I'm going to move on to something great. Gwinnett County wins contest for the best tasting water in Georgia. We are the best in Gwinnett County. Seriously, I like tap water. Not everybody likes tap water, though. I Let me tell you the tap water I did not like, East Orange tap water. When I was in Jersey, East Orange had the worst tap water ever. It was disgusting. It tasted something horribly. And we had the water plant in East Orange, and the water was disgusting. But at home, I like tap water. I drink tap water all the time. And people say stuff like, I don't know how you drink tap water easily. I put it in the glass, throw some ice in it, and I drink it. I like it. So that doesn't surprise me that Gwinnett has the best water in Georgia. The best tasting water in Georgia. And I get it. Some people don't. I don't. For some reason, I'm not particularly fond of bottled water because it, it doesn't taste right. And so when I talked to my doctor about that, he said, what you got to remember. Now, this is what the doctor said. It's not me. What my doctor said, because I said to him, I'm having a hard time keeping down bottled water. He said, the reason you have a hard time keeping down bottled water is because a lot of the minerals are taken out the water. That's why. And it's kind of harsh on your system. I said, oh, okay. So it made sense to me. So I don't drink a lot of bottled water because I have a hard time keeping bottled water down. I happen to love tap water. And I would get me a tall glass of tap in a hot second. Right? Newark used to have the best water in Jersey to me. Like, I love water in Jersey. When I when I was in East Orange, the water was disgusting. I didn't like it. Anyway, the county's drinking waters come from Lake Lanier. Lord have mercy. Woo, maybe it's blessed. Anyway, Gwinnett can now compete in the National American Water Association drinking water taste test. All right, go ahead, Gwinnett, with your bad self. We, listen, we got a whole water plant over there. We should have had the best water in Georgia because they spared no expense on our water plant. It is one of the best probably in the country. Yep. I want to give a shout out to the Gwinnett Daily Post. Yes. Listen, we all in this thing together. We got to report our news. They report theirs and they have been, they have been, uh, they earned, they have earned top honors for local news. Page one design and education reporting in annual Georgia and the annual Georgia Press Association contest. So kudos to you guys for that. Gwinnett Daily Post earned four first place honors in the Gwinnett and the Georgia Press Association 2021 Better Newspaper Contest, including top honors for local news coverage, page one design and education writing. So congratulations, uh, Gwinnett Daily Post, for your win. Listen, a win is a win, y'all. 
if I had a team of people, I would go after that. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, Gwinnett. I love you guys because I go here every day and get my news to share, but I might be going after that title next year. Yes, I just may do that. Yes. Anyway, the Daily Post competes in Division A for papers with a circulation of 800,000 8, or more. Hey, I probably won't be doing that. Not not when it comes to the paper. I, I used to publish a newspaper. I had a newspaper called Women in Business Today. That was my newspaper. I published it for two years. It was a lot of work. I got some copies in, in my in my garage somewhere, but I, I think I published, I think I did it two years, and I got a bunch of issues. I kept I'm very sentimental, so I keep all my stuff, and I keep that stuff because one day I want my granddaughter to say, oh, my, my she called me Gia. My Gia did this. She invented a doll. She published a newspaper. She launched a TV show. She she built a multi-million dollar empire in, in podcasting. Yes, that's what your Gia did, darling. That means you can do anything. I grew up with humble beginners in the, in the hood, baby. Shout out to all my friends on the bricks in Newark. If I can do it, you can do it. Yes, yes, yes. So, you know, I said all that to say, I'm coming from one of them titles. I don't know. It probably won't be the newspaper one for sure, Daily Post, because I, really, I ain't really into that whole newspaper thing. Even though somebody has approached me about starting a newspaper, I'm like, yeah, no. No, no, no. Not my thing. I've tried that. Been there, done that. That's a lot of work. Because here's the thing, they tell you that they're going to support you, and then I go out there and jump out there and launch, and then I don't get the support. And then I get all this him and a hon about why we can't do it. Nah, ain't going to do it. Ain't going to do it. Nope. Anyway, the Brunswick News won the General uh, Excellence Award in Division A, while the Valdosta Times earned the General uh, Excellence Awards in Division B, and the Walton Tribune... Um, place first in Division C. The Augusta Press won the prestigious Freedom of Information Award for the fourth time in five years. So look at y'all. I'm gonna have to. Listen, I'm gonna have. To, they need to have a podcast award. Like why? I'm gonna have to talk to the Georgia Press Association. Like listen, y'all need to add some some categories to that. It needs to be a podcast category for that. I think I might be able to compete in that one. The newspaper one, not so much. Not so much. I ain't. I'm not even interested. But anyway. All right, let's keep it going. Woo! Am I to the end of the news yet? One last thing, one last thing. There's a Social Security Social Security seminar happening this evening at 6 p.m. Um, it's going to be at the Meridian Community Center located at 105 Generation Boulevard in Loganville. Um, if you are trying to figure out your Social Security benefits, this is a chance for you to find out. One of the most important decisions you need to make before you retire is when to claim Social Security benefits. There, you can't just claim it. You don't have to wait until you actually retire. I think there's some kind of period where you can retire. You need to know how much money you can make and have and all these good things. That's what this, this workshop is going to do for you. It's going to explain to you your options and what, how, what you need to do to get started. So there's a Social Security workshop this evening from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. It's going to be at the Meridian Community Center. And that's located at 105 Generations Boulevard in Loganville. 10, listen, 10105 Generation Boulevard in Loganville. You got to pre-register though. You got to pre-register. Go to the patch.com, patch.com and click on Loganville. And you should be able to see the seminar there and, and register. You have to register, okay? All right, so listen. I'm almost at the end of my time. I got to tell y'all this real quick, and then I'm going to go to my last song, and, and I'm going to come back and close it out. So I talked about NFTs earlier. I'm excited because I'm working on an NFT for a client, and so <sighs> NFTs are the future. And yes, right now, crypto is crypto is going berserk. It's, it's down, 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 but it's going to come back. Now, I am a financial advisor. I am not telling you what to do financially, though, right? I am a licensed. Yes, I don't talk about it a lot on the show because I like to talk about Gwinnett News and people and places, but I am a licensed financial advisor. Gwin an NFT can be looked at as a piece of financial security if it's done right. When I launched my NFT back in January, I did it wrong. And the reason I did it wrong, I didn't know I was doing it wrong. I, I was just excited about the fact that I could create it and launch it, right? And so I did, but it didn't go anywhere because I didn't know what I was doing. Now, I'm going to relaunch it because now I know better. But in the meantime, I have a client. And one of the most important things to think about when you're launching an NFT that I found out later is that you need to have a community already. There needs to be a community already 
wrapped around your NFT. I did not know that. I thought I could just launch my NFT, put it out to the world, and because of what it was, people would come. Well, that doesn't happen. So I'm going to relaunch it, but I'm going to relaunch it after I do my clients because, or I'm probably going to relaunch it when I launch my clients because um, the, 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 that my client has a huge community already, huge, huge community with some real prestigious people that are a part of it with a, with a whole lot of money, right? And a whole lot of intelligence around NFTs. So I'm going to launch this NFT for my client. Now, people are saying, you probably saying, well, well what's the, what's the big deal about NFT? An NFT, which stands for non-fungible token, um, is a piece of, I want to say it's not money, but it could be. It's like a, it's like a great piece of collectible art or a collectible motorcycle or a collectible doll or a collectible teapot. It's a collectible that holds value based on the person that's holding the NFT. So when you think about an NFT, think about something that you hold valuable to your heart. Like there are people who collect dolls and they would pay any amount of money for a doll because they love dolls. I, I've seen these people, I've seen this woman one time pay 700, she was standing in front of me because I invented the first plus size fashion doll, Joe and myself, and I went to a doll show, right? And I went to a bunch of doll shows. Like this one year, my husband and I did about probably 15 doll shows over a nine month span, which is a lot because it was a traveling. We were traveling a lot. So my husband, he wasn't my partner, but he was my partner because he was on the road with me for a long time. But we were at a doll show and my booth, my doll booth was across from this other lady's doll booth. She had seven dolls at her booth. That's all she had. I had about, I probably had about 15, 20 dolls and my probably more like 20. Cause I think I had boxes and I might have more than that. But I had cases and cases of dolls at my booth. And I did okay, right? And I was selling my dolls for $59. Well, she had about $7 at her booth. And she was selling each one of them for $700. Let me say that again. She had seven. And she was selling each one of them for $700. And I saw this black woman go up to her booth and pay her $700 for one of those dolls. Now, I did pretty decent. My dolls were $59. They were collectible as well. But that lady made $700. So I probably made in my, I probably sold 10 dolls at that show, maybe 15, and made about close to 700, a little bit over. She sold one. Now, she sold more than one, but the first one she sold was to this black woman who paid $700. Now, here's a kicker about the doll. The only thing real on the doll was a doll head, which was made out of porcelain. Her hands, which was made out of porcelain, she had on clothes and her body, her hands were attached to the, to the dress she was wearing. Her head was attached to a wire. The clothes were on top of the wire to, to frame her body. And her, the only thing that was real was her head out of porcelain, her hands out of porcelain, and the fabric that her clothes were made out of. And it was all attached to some wire. So if you lifted up the dress, all you were going to see was a wire frame. $700. And I said to my husband, did she just pay $700 for that doll? Yes. Here's why. That doll, that doll creator had created a community for herself around the dolls that she made. She made limited edition dolls. And because, because she made these limited edition dolls, people wanted them. They were very scarce. And, and, and you could only get them at a certain time of the year. You could only get them if you showed up some of her, to some of her doll shows. So it wasn't like you could just go to, to Toy Fair, to the toy store, and buy the doll. You could only get them certain times of the year and at certain places. So because of that, that woman came there with her $700 knowing I'm going to get me one. I'm, I'm going to get one of these dolls. I know it is a, it's a one of a kind because none of her dolls were. She had about seven. They were all different. So none of them were the same. So they, she had an original of some doll. So when you think about an NFT, think about it like that. You've heard people say, oh, I got a Rembrandt. Oh, I got an Andy Warhol. Oh, I got a Van Gogh. Oh, I got a Michelangelo. One of a kind pieces of art. By the artisan. Very, very limited editions. That's what makes it important. So when you think about NFTs, that's the way you have to think about it. Now, here's the thing about NFTs, though. The difference between the artwork and just the NFT. 
if you build in what's called a utility into the NFT, it becomes even more valuable. So it's a limited edition with a utility attached to it. So with my client, I'm building in about three utilities into that into that NFT, which means that it has more than just the value of the artwork that's attached to it. There's going to be something that you can do with the NFT that's in the physical world as well. Because right now, if you do some research on NFTs, you're going to find that a lot of them are just digital artwork. But as we get smarter in this space, we know that utilities should be attached. And I'm going to attach utilities to his to his to his nft and i'm excited about that and i said to my husband i almost feel like (laughs) i almost feel like um inside of trading because i believe that this is going to be one of the best things we're going to do this year just one of them because i I got a bunch of them planned but i feel like this is going to be one of the best right and i said to him i could tell you right now when i tell my friends they need to get their money ready before we go public they need to get their money ready before we go public which is funny, right? It's not insider trading, y'all. It's just me having some friends that I'm going to share that with. Now, in, in the NFT world, we call that whitelisting. That means that you are part of my community. I'm letting you know before we go public that this is about to happen. So if you are in my circle, when I send out that email or that text message saying, listen, this is what you need to do because I'm going public with my client's NFT and you want to make sure that you are ready to get you save your money up. It's not going to be cheap. I'm going to tell you that right now. It's not going to be cheap because of who, who that person is. So save your money up. It's probably going to go live in August, the end of August. So save your money up. And I'm going to say save up at least $500. I don't know what the client is going to sell for. I'm going to suggest around five to seven hundred dollars they can sell for what they want to sell for it may not be that it may be so let me let me just put that in in ethereum so if you see it and we kick it off let's say we kick it off at 0.25 ethereum based on what crypto what the crypto market is doing it that day right that could be anywhere from the five to to a thousand dollars save your money and here's why you want to save your money because you want to be a part of you want to own some of this collectible and when I tell you, I already know it's going to be valuable, I already know. You know why I know? Because my client has a huge community, huge community, way bigger than my community. And when I say community, it's not just a community, and i give you a prime example. It's not just a community of people that know me. It's a community invested in what I was selling. See, I wasn't in the dial world. I've been out of the dial world for a very long time. So I thought that I could just, this happened to me when I first started a doll company. We thought that we could just sell a doll to black women because we were black women. Come to find out, nah, that's not the case. The people that actually bought my doll was predominantly white women. And they would only buy my black doll. Even though I had a black doll, a white doll, and a Hispanic doll, I had predominantly white clients who only bought the black doll. That's how it was. But when we came out the gate, we came out that thing, oh my God, black people are going to buy this doll because we're black and we're women and it's a doll. It didn't happen like that. I did the same thing when I launched my NFT. I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm a black woman. I'm doing a black NFT in this tech space and I'm a black woman. They're going to support me. Didn't happen like that. I had no community. I had no community. My client has a huge community, a huge, very engaged community that follows everything they do and when i tell you everything everything so i'm excited about doing this nft i'm going to be talking more about it save your money that's all i'm saying save your money because the day i tell you you are my community i'm telling you right now and if you if you want to make sure you get on the white list email me audrey at goodmorninggwinnett.com that's g-w-i-n-n-e-t-t Audrey at goodmorninggwinnett.com. Email me and put white list in the subject line. Put white list in the subject line. I'm telling you, you're going to want to get one. And I'm telling you, you are my community. I'm letting you know right now, save your money. I don't know how much it's going to be. I'm telling you what I'm going to suggest it be, but it's up to the client. So, talk tech, talk business Tuesday. That's all I got. I'm going to go to my last song for the day and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to give you my word of inspiration. So stay tuned. I was living in the clouds, yeah, like to million explosions. Whatever happened to the picture? The one 
when you and I were perfect Like if heaven was a time lapse Play the story where we'd end up Would you pause it for a second Before this thing was over Would you come a little closer Before this thing is over I gotta go but before I go I want to give you my word of inspiration here goes it says innovation is the belief that there is a way to do everything and if that is so there is a better and best way to do everything let me say that again innovation is the belief that there is a way to do everything and if that is so there's a better way and the best way to do everything Michael Gerber said that and he was right I, I ended the, the last segment talking about the NFT and why mine fell Here's the thing. Mine fell because I didn't know any better. When you know better, you do better. Now that I know better, now I have a major client, now I could do better. Because everything, you can do anything, right? You got to first believe you can do every, anything. And then once you believe that, then you got to do it. Sometimes you're going to fall on your face, though. Trust me. My face hit the pavement again. I'm not, listen, I'm not I'm not new to falling on my face. I've been doing this 25 years, so get you just need to know I've hit the pavement plenty of times face first but here's what i do i get back up i fix my nose and then i start over again and i learn from my mistakes and guess what i'm able to do after that i'm able to help people i'm able to help people do it because now i failed so now you can succeed because i failed and that's to me that's fine because now i can help you succeed because i failed mine now i can help my clients succeed and i'm excited because I failed early so they can see six months later. Remember, I launched my NFT in, in January. That was six months ago. I failed. I've learned. I've made connections. I'm excited. You know, um, it's it's an exciting time. And, and don't let the distractions of the stock market, don't let the distractions of the crypto market scare you. That stuff does not last long. 
it's going to bounce back and it's going to bounce back in a big way. What you got to do is believe that innovation is everything and you can do everything better. And don't be afraid to fail. Failure is just an ex- just an experience, experience to do better the next time. That's all. Because failure don't kill you. It only makes you stronger. That's all I got for you today. Remember, if you want to get on this white list, I'm telling y'all, if you want to get on the white list, when the NFT drops, email me, Audrey, A-U-D-R-E-Y, at Good morning gwinnett that's g-w-i-n-n-e-t-t dot com put whitelist in the message if you do not put whitelist in the message i will not know and chances are i won't even open up your email put white list in the message inside of that put your name and make sure i got the correct email address so i will add you to the whitelist you're my community i'm telling you i didn't know i didn't know to tell you before i know to tell you now And the way we're going to set it up, I'm trying to make it pretty easy for you to just be able to go and purchase the NFT really simply. All right? It's going to be a beautiful NFT. It's got a lot of utilities built into it, so you're going to like it. It's got a great cause attached to it. That's another great thing. I'm excited to be the the creator of it. So, um, yeah, yeah. That's all I got, y'all. I got to go because I got work to do. I got work to do. I got to go. Save your money. It won't be cheap. It won't be cheap. I'll be back again tomorrow. Tomorrow is Wise Women Invest Wednesday, so it's going to be a two-part show. I'm going to give you news and and horoscopes and everything happening around Gwinnett County. Then we're going to cut it off, and then we're going to jump over to LinkedIn Live to um, to do our live show. So be sure to tune in. That's all I got for you today. Could have been anywhere in the world, but you spent the last hour and 14 minutes with me. Yes, I went over about 14 minutes. But I appreciate you for sticking around. I'll be back again tomorrow at 10 a.m., God willing. Until next time, my friends, until next time, make it a great day. Bye, y'all. You've been listening to Good Morning Gwinnett. Make sure to tune in Monday through Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time to find out what's happening around Gwinnett. If you like this episode, subscribe now and share with your friends. To learn more about Noise Media Network, visit noisemedia.us.